Tim Wells with Korean with Click Designs and today we're going to be having a tutorial on our series on looking at the elements in Click Designs and how they work into the editor. Today we'll be looking at the image element and seeing what options we have available for that. As I said, part of a series and once we finish the series we will be able to move on to doing some analysis on different graphics and how they were done, how they were put together and what options we use to do that in the Click Designs editor. Here we are again at the Click Designs interface and we're going to be doing a tutorial today on the images and our options for the images in the Click Designs editor. This is part of our series on different elements and their options in the Click Designs editor. So we're going to go ahead and start from scratch. We will give the project a name. We will call it Images88, just so we have a name for it. Click on Continue. We'll accept the default cabinet settings and click Continue. And now we are in the Click Designs Editor, so we're going to go ahead and go to our background to start off with, as I always like to do. We're going to set that either a white or black color. We're going to set it to white this time. And then we will go to our zoom in and zoom out buttons and make it size so we see the entire cabinets on the screen. So then we will go to our images icon. And when it loads up, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see a window here, which is actually an editor, but we don't have anything selected yet. And then you will see your most recent uploads. And so those are from a project I was working on. Now, if you look at the toolbar here, we have uploads, library, search, and cutouts. So the uploads are going to be whatever you upload to Click Design. The library will be the built-in library in Click Designs, which is provided by Pixabay. The one category I use most here is the backgrounds, which has preset background images to use on your projects. And then if we go back up here to our toolbar, we have search, which we can use to search by keywords for any thing we want so let's go ahead and type in what do we want to use here let's type in rabbit just give it a name press enter and then we're going to have images of rabbit sh show up here based on that keyword and then we also have our cutout section which is provided by click designs I've never actually used anything in this section so far but it has cutouts in various categories as you can see and that's sort of it now let's go back to our uploads actually let's go to our search here so the first thing we want to do is look at what we would do if we were going to import an image into click designs so we would go here where it says click to browse click on that it's going to bring up our file system on our computer which in this case is going to be my desktop and then I will go here to the main desktop and pick out a picture and I am just going to pick out something that I have been using on eBay which I have not been editing in Click Design because eBay has its own built-in photo editor but we will use that picture here all right, and you notice it doesn't appear on the canvas and it doesn't appear here because we're still on the search category. So we need to go to uploads and then we will see what we've uploaded and we'll click on that and we will upload it in the editor. And so as you can see, it's rather big. We're gonna have to resize that photo using the sizing handles on the boundary box and we'll go ahead and do that right now. And then we will make our cabinets a little bigger here, but not so big we can't see it on screen. And let's resize this just a little more down. And that will probably be good. And we'll set it in the middle here for right now. Okay, so this image is just something that I took with my cell phone. And then we imported it through Dropbox to our computer. And then once we got it on our computer, we uploaded it into click designs and so that's what's going on now the next thing you need to realize there's a I don't want to call it a glitch let's call it a, a quirk here with click designs at this time 
So I've got an image on my cabinets selected. I also have that image showing up in the crop image window. So if I go here and I adjust my image here on the cabinets, you'll notice that it does not change in the crop image box. However, if we delete this and we reload the image again, and again, this is kind of probably not the best picture I chose for this, but it's the one we're going to work with here. Now, if I go to my crop image selection, we are going to go ahead and crop it like we might. If we were going to do this for some kind of selling site and try to get a nice boundary around that. Now you notice what happens is when I do that in the crop image window, it also changes on the cabinets. So just be aware of that is that if you resize a crop directly on the cabinet image, it's just not going to change anything in the crop image window. But if you choose to do that in the crop image window, it's going to do it on both the crop image window and the cabinets. And that's all for that. Oh, one other thing we're going to talk about very briefly here is ClickBlind does have a pro image editor which runs on credits. As you can see, I have zero because I've never used this. And I can't vouch for the results and quality of it, therefore. But let's just say that it is here. And if you do are interested in this, our pricing for that is $4.95 for 100 credits or $19.95 for unlimited credit and that is a per month charge but as I've never used this and that's all I can really say about it so let's go ahead and get out of that and go back to our screen now I'm going to go ahead and delete this image because all that resizing is going to get in our way later on down in this tutorial so we will go back to our images let's go to search and just pick up one of our rabbit images here and I just want to find one that I like and none of them's really talking to me but I will pick this one right here okay so we have our image and then we will click on it to select it so you can see the boundary rocks and the sizing handles so you see it also had the image in the crop image editor which we've already talked about below that we have the angle control which is standard for all click design elements we have a control for 90 degrees 180 degrees 270 degrees 360 degrees and don't forget that 360 is also the same thing as zero now we can choose one of these to change the sizing or rather excuse me I got that all wrong we can choose one of the preset angles to change the angle of the picture but what we can also do is use the arrow control here to change the angle and that's good for f fine tuning things now be aware that this does also operate with negative numbers so if you put a negative in there and then press enter you're going to get it aligned in the opposite direction. And then if we don't want to do mess with the presets and we don't want to mess with the arrows, we can always just type in a number directly here and type enter. And that will enter it at that angle. And then we're going to return to 360 degrees. So we're back to zero degrees. And that's really all there is for the angle. Now the next control is an opacity control, which is just your standard 0 to 100 opacity control. Pretty much have that for all elements and click designs. Now here's where we have a little interesting section called the image filter sections. And click designs is not Photoshop, so click design designs to do things quickly. So we have a limited number of filters. That if you wanted an unlimited number of options for photo manipulation, you need something like Photoshop. But that's not why we're using click design. We're using click designs because we want to do things quickly and effectively. But they do have a few filters here. 
so the none filter simply returns the image to whatever it was and so it's a good kind of return to base button we have a grayscale button which will make the picture black and white and if you notice when I have the grayscale selected it turns the button purple if I click on it again it turns off and it's no longer selected we have a sepia filter which turns everything purple we have a sepia 2 filter which turns everything green and we have an invert filter which reverses the colors now one thing about these buttons is we can use more than one at one time so we can take our sepia which turns the color purple and then click the invert and it's going to basically give us the inverse color of that purple and then we can click on them both and get back to zero and if you want to make sure for double double bonus back to zero go ahead and click on the none button the other four buttons in the image filter section are what I call tonal control they are contrast brightness blur and noise if we click on one of them it will turn purple and then you see it has a little edit icon you click on that it has a slider control where you can make adjustments to the contrast and then once again if you click out and then click it again and turn off the uh, purple status it will return back to the original picture we'll go ahead and click on none to make sure we really are there and that's it for the filter section below that is the generate color palette section which will generate a color palette based upon the colors in the photo so if we click generate you see it's giving us a range of colors that are complementary to the colors in our image and that's pretty much all it is but it's nice to have that little feature in there below that are our advanced controls so we have shadow which will put a shadow around the border of the picture you can choose the color of the shadow and you can choose the blur and you can choose the hop offset for vertical and horizontal so the way that would be most effective if you want to create what I call the box sitting on top of a box effect is move our horizontal out a little bit and then we move our vertical out a little bit and it creates this offset shadow you can also do it in the opposite direction so we can move it horizontal to the left and the vertical offset back this way where it's going to be on the top now and so that's really all we've got going on with the shadow next control is the circle image control which surprisingly does exactly what it says it takes whatever image in the middle and puts a circle around it and so you have two controls for that you have the color of the border you select and the border width which can get pretty wide actually probably more than you would want so you can adjust your border width with that and that's really all we have for the circle image controls for controls and then we have the most interesting thing here is the reflection effect so we're going to move our image up to the top here and we're actually going to resize it a little bit and I hope that's not going to be too hard to see on the video when it's rendered if we click on reflection uh, if you can see here it create we have the original image and we have a reflection of the image as if it's reflecting off water and even though this looks like two images next to each other is actually two images group so if we move it on the cabinets they move together and then for our controls on the reflection we have a opacity control which only affects the reflected image and a position control which operates like the angle control in negative and positive numbers if we move it to the negative it will move the reflected image further away from the original image if we go back to near zero or zero there it puts them together adjoining and if we go to the positive number it sort of folds the reflected image under the original image and so that's what we have for the reflection control it's an interesting little effect and then below that we have our other layer options which are common for all things in click funnels and because we only have one image on the screen 
we some of these are not going to be quite effective so let's go ahead and duplicate this for right now and then we will actually let's go ahead and delete that and let's bring up another image of a rabbit and let's go ahead and choose this guy here okay so now we have two images on screen and then so if we select this one we can go to our first control which says bring forward and you notice that it brings that image forward now also we have a send backwards so if we click on that with our that same image selected it sends it backwards and then also don't forget that we have the new layers function that we can do similar things with we can actually name each layer and using edit control we can lock each layer in place or we can make it invisible so in this case we click on that it will make the other image invisible and if you have a lot of images on the screen the layer control is going to be a more effective way of dealing with that so let's go ahead and get rid of this second image because we don't need it anymore for demonstration purposes and then we also have here if we go back down to our controls here we have a center horizontally function a center vertically function a duplicate function a flip horizontally function and a flip vertically function and then we have lock which will lock everything on the screen select all which will select everything on the screen and then a fit the screen button and then our delete button and don't forget that you also have many of those same controls on the drop down if you put your mouse cursor over the picture right click and then you have some of the settings that are on the other layers option panel also on that drop down so that is our tutorial for today on images and the click design editor and the options we have for working with them so my name is tim willis this is creating with click designs i make videos for a product called click designs which i've been using for about a year if you're interested in learning more about click designs there's a link in the description below there's also a link to the companion Facebook group for this YouTube channel, also called Green with Click Designs, where I post links to the videos here and also some additional material. So I've been a little slow lately getting videos up, had some other things going on, but I'm back to making tutorials again. So I hope to have another one up soon after we get this one posted. And so I appreciate if you like the video and subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified when new videos are available other than that this is tim wilf with creating with click designs have a nice day and we will see you at the next tutorial